All right, uh, kia ora tato and welcome everybody uh, to recommencement of our Committee of Council meeting uh, for Monday the 11th of May. Uh, this is our 3.30pm audio visual uh, session and uh, councillors uh, sort of explain obviously that this meeting is uh, being recorded uh, and will be on the council website for public um, use. And uh, for the submitters, 10-minute um, uh, um, opportunity to um, speak to your submission. Uh, please, uh, we've uh, take it as being read, uh, your submission, and if you'd like to either summarise or add any new information and just allow a little bit of time for councillors to perhaps ask questions. Uh, we'll give you an eight-minute um, heads up uh, how you're faring in terms of time. Remind councillors, um, as you have done in the past, just use the chat bar for any questions. Um, there have been no additional items that I'm aware of. Uh, declarations of interest, uh, Councillor Petrinus, um, uh, in respect to the Hoffman Kiln Trust. Um, apologies uh, to be received. We now have uh, Councillor Dennison there, so I think we have a full house. And uh, in terms of the submissions being heard today, um, we have five submissions and uh, if I could just go to our governance manager, um, Hannah, do we have David Chappell with us now on with the men's shed? Not yet. Okay. All right. Well, we'll go to number two um, and thank you for turning up early, uh, Ben. Uh, ben Schmidt, who's the coordinator for the Manawatu Tenants Union and it's submission at number 30. Ben, um, if you're online, um, the floor is yours. Awesome. Uh, kia ora koutou and thank you for this opportunity to speak to the submission. I simply want to emphasise three main points today in speaking to our submission. First, to thank and congratulate the staff from the City Council for their response to the COVID-19 situation. They have done an outstanding job, especially with the welfare support. I've supported tenants to use that process and they have found it to be excellent and given them the support they need when they need it and what this emphasizes is the need to keep a strong council public service as we recover from COVID-19. Um, staff have stepped up to the job we need to keep that capability in order to manage the recovery going ahead and I would encourage the council not to follow the direction made by some other councils around the country of making cuts rather than keeping those capabilities as we recover. Secondly, the housing crisis is still with us. It is still an increasing issue. Um, you're all aware of that. And while it is encouraging to see the progress happening in Papaioia Place, I would encourage the council not to delay other works, but to continue pushing ahead as much as possible with social housing. We're expecting to see unemployment increase, which will leave more tenants struggling to pay the rent, um, especially our student population in Palmerston North has had many or had hard losing hospitality and casual work income, especially for international students who may not have other or significant other government support. We need to do everything possible to expand social housing and keep it affordable for these vulnerable groups in our city. Lastly, the community sector has played a key role in supporting people through COVID-19. And while there have been some services, Manawatu Tenants Union amongst them, that have experienced a somewhat of a decrease in new contacts and new cases during the lockdown, we don't expect this to last for long. We know it's going to be tough coming out of level three and more people will be feeling the long term effects. So it's essential that the council continues to fund community groups to support people through the crisis, through the recovery and also in bringing our, continuing to bring our communities together within the city. That is our, our submission and happy to take any questions on that. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Um, and uh, no, we've uh, we've uh, read your um, submission well, and uh, thank you for advocating for um, your 
your sector. Um, I'll open it up for any questions. Uh, Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thanks, Ben, for the submission. Just on the on the written part of your submission, you referred to more homeless, actual homeless people um, showing up um, at MTU, and just wondered if if you were interpreting or understanding that as homeless people newly discovering your services or an expansion in the number of homeless people and what you're actually seeing in that case. No, thank you, Brent. Um, while I'm not. I can't see any response. Uh, we feel that it would likely be a combination of both. Uh, we've seen the housing crisis get worse over years. We've also seen our contacts with tenants consistently increasing over time. So I would say that it is probably a combination of more people experiencing homelessness and in precarious housing, but also us continuing to expand our reach into tenants and into some of those communities. Cool, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Dingwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Ben, for your submission. Um, I, you mentioned that um, you'd seen a bit of a lull over the COVID period of people accessing your services. Mm. Um, are you able to expand on that a little bit? Do you think it's because um, there are, uh, you know, rules that have come out through through government at the moment around the renting situation or do you think people are having trouble accessing your services during this time or why do you think there's been a lull thanks on the first part the laws that have come in or the changes to protect tenants from evictions during COVID-19 have absolutely helped um april was our busiest month correction march was our busiest month ever recorded um including people coming to us around landlords trying to kick them out just before level four going into level four that changed as soon as those protections were introduced by the government since then we're not completely sure to be honest um, i suspect part of the reason is because of people focusing on some of their other immediate needs and landlords perhaps backing off a bit during uh, the restrictions what we have remained fully contactable by phone, which is a lot of our contacts, but without that physical presence, that will account for part of the drop off. Lastly, I'd emphasize that we are not the only people seeing this trend. Um, some other services in Palmerston North have seen similar trends. Our friends at Tenants Protection in Auckland have, for example, seen a 50% decrease um, in their contacts over the last month as well. So we're certainly not the only organisation seeing that, but we're expecting that to likely change as we, the crisis, as the wage subsidy runs out, will be the real test. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Well, that's, uh, that's exhausted all the questions, uh, Ben. So look, thank you very much for your submission. Um, you're 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 a veteran at these, so you know the you know the drill. They'll go towards uh, um, deliberations uh, on May the twentieth, um, but uh, uh, you know we have a a, a fairly strong um, uh, sense of um, the social housing uh, needs in our city. So uh, um, your your um, submission will be. Um, will be taken into um, consideration there. So thanks again, uh, and thank you to all the work that you do in the community. Thank you. Right, uh, councillors, we move on. Um, and what, what we'll do is we'll go back to our first um, submitter, and David Chappell, you're there. Do you want to turn your microphone on, David? David, if you can unmute yourself. Um, right. We can hear you, David. It's good. Okay. Fine. Sorry about that. My That's apologies okay. for, um, for being late. Uh, it was a technical issue that uh, the instructions were hidden behind something else and I couldn't see them. So I have my apologies. Um, I'm here, of course, on behalf of Menshed. And our intention when we indicated that we wanted to make a presentation to this process was to update the council with where we were with the plans to alter and extend the men's shed building. 
a building we call our our building, but of course it's uh, it's actually your building. So, but since since we made this application, uh, things have changed. Um, but I thought I should just um, expand a little bit on the purpose of Men's Shed for new councillors. And um, sheds are all about sharing ideas, about being creative, giving back to the community through undertaking community projects, and also looking after one another in an atmosphere of having a good time with laughter and chatting. We are an organisation that takes very seriously the phrase walking beside one another and men talking shoulder to shoulder. And the phrase for the health and well-being of men, particularly the well-being of men, which is particularly in, of, of um, note at the moment, is crucially important to us. One of the real benefits of belonging to the shed is gaining a sense of purpose through being part of a team, contributing to community projects and helping other organisations in a practical way so that they can better do what they do as part of the community. And we are grateful for the expression of support from the council and the practical help we have been getting from council officers. So we have progressed to the point where we have almost completed detailed plans for the alterations and additions to the building based on the design submitted previously. We've had some very generous arrangements from our architectural and engineering consultants, which some of you might not find surprising. And the building industry in general has been very supportive to us. The internal operations will give us more space to complete projects and enable us to accommodate a few more members. However, to expand our activities, we need to construct the additions. We now realise that our funding plans will most likely be frustrated. And that a number of community groups will be in a greater need for funding than us. And also that there will be much less funding available. We therefore now consider that the prudent path to take is to split the project into two, carry out the internal alterations to give us more usable space, but leave the additions to the climate as more certain. Nearly all our members are over 70, and a number of those who are not probably have health challenges. So we feel we need to move ahead with caution. Since the lockdown, we have been meeting weekly by Zoom, with members being long linked in, especially targeting those who live alone. We, when we do reopen, we may well have to operate at more times with less people per session. We are working our way through that process at the moment. We have a number of inquiries from people during the lockdown, and I suspect these are from men who have lost a job or decided to retire, and we are looking for something meaningful to occupy their days. I expect more inquiries in the next few weeks or months. Thanks to the advice from council officers, we were able to adjust our plan slightly and avoid having a resource consent. Our next hurdle will be the cost of the building consent. And if we split the project into two, we will need two of those animals. I know that the council in its long-term plan undertook to give some financial support to the project. And I'm uncertain as to when this was to happen. If this could be time to include the stage when we are having substantial costs such as building consent fees, it would mean that our limited funds could be spent on the actual work itself. So this is a slightly amended submission that we would have put forward before, but uh, that's really all I have to say today. Thank you, David. And uh, well done for um, uh, getting online here and, and uh and, and giving us uh, an updated uh, of an updated version of that submission or some uh, new parts to it. So if, if I could, do, we have a couple of questions. If I could just ask the first one. So obviously, stage one will be the interior, and stage two is the exterior. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay. And was there a dollar value? Was there a, a rough QS value on the work? No, we haven't quite got there. We. I was talking to the quantity surveyor this morning, but he hasn't quite got there. So we're just a little bit, uh, our uh, timing is not quite in sequence with yours. Right. Okay. And um, could I ask, is it uh, one of the officers um, through you, um, Hannah, is, uh, is, could anybody tell me in the long-term plan, or maybe they will ask it this other question while they go hunting for it, what the value of our long-term plan commitment to this, this project was, please?
We do have a few officers online. I'm just searching to see who'd be the most appropriate person, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I've just got a message through. Um, they're unsure. There may be no, there's a commitment in there, but there's no values in there. So I, I, I suppose, um, thank, thank you for that. Um, so I'll go, now go to um, uh, Councillor Harpeter. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, David. I, I had an, a suspicion it was around about 170,000, but I don't know, David, if it was around that. Did you remember that when you bought that council paper to, to no, I, I don't the remember. Sport and Rec meeting? And I went looking for it, but I couldn't find it. Yeah, I, uh, I think it was around about 170,000 from my memory of when you bought it to the Sport and Rec meeting. Uh, my question was around timeframes. So you're just following up from the Mayor's question was around timeframes. You talked about um, what you wanted to achieve was the indoor and outdoor. What time frames do you want around the indoor to get what what year are you looking at? Just so it gives us a better idea. The indoor in this year and probably the, the outdoor, the extensions in the following year. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, I just that was a that was just off the top of my head what I think you put in was around about 170. But that was just off the top of my head. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Great. Thank, thank you, Councillor. And I mean, if it's 170 for the total project, then if there was some community money um, and and some possible um, other external money, then it, 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 um, it, it would sort of make Council's um, contribution perhaps a bit less because we've already got the building in there. Um, I'll now go to Councillor Beatty. Um, um, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you, David. David, are you aware that there is a fund that you can apply for through the Finance and um, Audit Committee for um, relief from consent and development contributions? No, I'm not. No. Okay. Well, there is a fund that you can apply. So <laughs> offline, we offline we can talk to you about that. Okay. Thank you very much. That was great help. Well, that was really my my me meaning. My intention for coming today was to seek your support and help and uh, and guidance of this because we're not not very experienced at this sort of thing. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that's thank all you, I have. Yeah, thank you, councillor. And because uh, those councillors that are, have been here a little bit longer can recall the a miniature railway um, coming to us over several projects. So. Um, yep. And and we can um, we can take that uh, that burden away um, or some of that burden away from groups like yourself. Okay. Can I just say we've had a really um, previously interesting um, comments from funding agencies uh, that they were really supporting of us, but we're just mindful of the fact in the present climate that that we don't see ourselves at the head of the queue. Other people, I'm sure, will have far greater need. We can we can operate, and that's that's a blessing. So we think we consider ourselves fortunate, and we don't want to be um, precluding someone else doing something. So that's the hesitancy. Oh no, okay. thank you. Understand, and thanks for your um, being so thoughtful. Um, and look, I mean, it may give you a bit more time too to pull the whole project together and uh, how it is skinned totally from uh, maybe a staged approach. So. Again, thank you. That's exhausted the questions, David. Um, okay. Thank you for your submission, and uh, it will be taken um, into deliberations uh, on the 20th um, of May. Um, you're very welcome to either tune into that, or if, if, we're, li if we're in the chamber or, or another venue, then you're welcome to attend that. Uh, thank you for all the work that the men's shed do in our community as well. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, councillors. Um, we'll now move to our next our next uh, submitter, which is number thirty two, which is Sport Manor Two. And I'm unsure if we've got Trevor or Nolan or both. Um, and uh, the floor is yours, gentlemen. Trevor. Trevor. 
Iya, komedi. Trevor, we're struggling to hear you. Can I suggest you turn your uh, camera off and just have audio? Sure. Mr. Mayor, can you um, see and hear me okay? We can. Right. We've got you, Nolan. Fine. Um, uh, Trevor, how are we going with you? Not very good. Oh, that's a bit better. I can hear you now. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, excellent. It shows on my screen that but my microphone's off. I should have, lucky I didn't say anything untoward. <laughs> Directed at the screen, that is. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, kia ora tātou, uh, tēnā ngā mihi kia, kia tātou katoa, uh, ko te tūmai nei tēnei wā, i a kuru nga tira mā ngā mora i ngā hapa o ki muri, uh, kānui ngā mihi kia koutou. So firstly, um, just want to acknowledge um, uh, Mr. Mia Grant, uh, also Councillor Harpeta and Councillor Mian for their regular contact over the last few weeks in terms of checking in with our sector. Um, so that's Are you there, Trevor? We seem to have lost you. Trevor's still showing in the call, Mr Mayor, but yes, he certainly dropped out of my feed as well. Okay. Um, I wonder if we... <laughs> this is unusual, never done this before. Um, I wonder if we um, will go to one of the other um submitters and then come back to him um might be the best way of dealing with it certainly i'll give him a call okay thank you all right sorry about that nolan but we'll come back to you um okay um stephen uh, berg from the new zealand rugby museum are you online i am mr mayor good welcome floor's yours thank you very afternoon uh, thank you everybody uh, good afternoon um, to the councillors, uh, and what a great afternoon it is out there, eh? Can't wait to get outside and uh, make the most of it as soon as my submission's over. <laughs> uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to our submission. Since it was sent about a month ago, a few things have evolved, and I do have some additional information to, to add. Uh, firstly, um, last year, as you're all aware, the sad passing of Sir Brian Lahore, we have been canvassing for a new patron and we're pleased to advise that David Kirk has accepted uh, and been appointed uh, the new patron of the museum. And David has already been in contact with us suggesting ways that he can help fundraise for the museum uh, given the current situation, which is really, really pleasing. Great to have such an active patron. Uh, secondly, uh, in addition to our submission, uh, I s neglected to mention that uh, Joanne Ransom presented a recommendation to the Arts, Culture and Heritage Committee in March, and in that recommendation it mentioned our grant uh, and uh, the fact that we would uh, like to have that on an annual basis. And thirdly, uh, just to reiterate uh, what we were talking about last year, one of the, the, the things for a long term uh, situation with the Rugby Museum is we, we're looking for a safe and secure building. We're looking for long term 
tenure that's assured. Uh, we want to stay as part of the cultural precinct. So whatever development ends up happening, we want to be a part of that. And we're very happy to stay alongside Te Manawa. So with that uh, information, Mr. Mayor, and alongside our submission, I'm, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Stephen. Um, and uh, look, uh, a couple of things, obviously, with COVID, which has affected the museum. Um, obviously, you're shut. Um, that's, the, that's probably the main thing. Uh, you've had a few uh, grants that have been uh, temporarily um, put on hold, um, and I won't be paid in the next year, possibly a bit longer with the New Zealand Rugby Union. Um, and your um, and your uh, international visitation will obviously be affected because you your numbers was were skewed towards um, uh, one of the few in our city. In fact, that was heavily skewed towards internationalism. That's correct. Yeah, that, that is correct, Grant. Um, uh, we have been in a couple of discussions with CEDA around uh, marketing the region, and obviously we're a part of that moving forward. Um, but as you say, the, it's going to be domestic tourists that we're going to be targeting. CEDA will, uh, is winding up, but every region in New Zealand is going to be targeting domestic tourism it's what um <laughs> you know you don't have an option so uh but we are in discussions and, and we're doing whatever we can to play our part to support uh, uh you know bringing people to the to the city yeah i suppose some australians could be in there too um uh, <laughs> Stephen, you might need to put a wallabies uh a wallabies um, exhibition together yeah, yeah, we, that, that's, uh, as soon as I can get access to the building grant, one of the cabinets is going to be converted into an Aussie cabinet for sure. Very good. All right, we've got a couple of questions for you. Uh, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Stephen, for um, coming along today, virtually. Um, so as you mentioned, there was the paper from um, officers that came to Arts, Culture and Heritage, which look, started to look at getting your... Um, any funding from council on a more regular basis and noting in your submission you're talking about the next three years so um, I suppose we can have a conversation about this year and then you'll be are you looking for that to go forward into the long-term plan discussions yes please yeah okay good to know um, and then as the mayor referenced losing your um, NZ rugby union grant as a result of covid um, mm. yeah, and obviously they're in a tricky situation financially, but um, so are, so are lots of us. Um, does that does that make a difference to how you can operate? I mean, you're asking for twenty thousand mm. dollars from the council for curatorial services, but if you don't have your your baseline funding, does that make a, diff a substantial difference to what you can do? Yeah, it, it, there will be a substantial impact uh, for sure. Uh, you know, you can't avoid that. A lot of our income was coming from ticket sales so and you know you take away that uh, and there's the also the the New Zealand rugby union grant but we have built up reserves and the reserves will allow us the uh, you know the chance to handle the situation to get our way through um, someone's got a conversation going in the background I think I it's the prime know. minister's announcement somebody's got their microphone on uh, um, <laughs> It's nice of the yeah. Prime Minister to join our hearing. <laughs> yeah, if she could hear us, I know. Um, yeah, the, look, the, the museum had 50 years history of careful financial management. So we understand that we're going to be um, you know, obviously having to, to run on the smell of an oily rag for a while. And we're, But we're capable of doing that. We've proved that we can do it before and, and we will continue to do that. Okay, so the um, request for funding for curatorial services still stands? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, it, that's going to be something that we're going to have to do. Uh, and and it, the best opportunity is now when, um, you know, we go, you get quiet. these visitors, yeah. Okay, lovely. Thanks for that, Stephen, and um, best wishes. Thanks very much, Rachel. Ah, oh, Grant's muted. <laughs> Uh, 
I, I was sorry. Time. I am here. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Um, and I think everyone got muted because of the uh, feedback from the TV. Um, uh, thank you, Stephen. There are no further questions. Um, we just uh, wish the Rugby Museum all the best. Um, uh, and we um, keep doing the good work you're doing. And uh, we'll uh, we'll endeavour to get uh, that Tamanawa complex open as soon as we can. And uh, your submission um, will go forward to the 20th of May uh, to our, our uh, Committee of Council deliberations. And you can be sure that it'll get a fair hearing. So thank you for submitting. Thank you. Um, uh... All right. Well, councillors, we'll go back now. We'll see if we can reconnect with Sport Manawa 2. So I'll now, um, I see Trevor has rejoined the meeting. Um, Trevor and Nolan, back to you. Sport Manawa 2. Great. Uh, thank, thank you, Grant. Uh, apologies, uh, the, the joy of uh, technology. So just firstly, uh, kānui ngā mihi kia, kia koutou. Ia kura uranga tira mā ngā mōrangi, ngā hapai o ki muri kānui ngā mihi kia koutou. So firstly, just acknowledge um, you, Mr. Mayor, uh, also Councillor Harpeter and Councillor Mian for the uh, regular catch-ups that we've had over the last few weeks in relation to checking in with our sector. Um, it's a delight to be here today just to, to touch on our submission. Um, as you can see from our submission, we are pretty positive and supportive and delighted to see the work that Council are doing in a number of areas, um, particularly around the walkway, walkway network, also the sports field uh, renovations, but also um, just that funding around the, the sports fields and so forth. We, we believe um, going forward with this crisis, COVID-19, that um, uh, play, active rec and sport are going to be quite crucial in the coming weeks. Um, and we believe, um, you know, working alongside council with council's vision of what you want to achieve gives us a really good uh, opportunity to look at trying to address some of the challenges that that our the, the sector is is facing. Um, I've also got uh, our chair uh, Nolan King, who's here, who who will also just talk briefly on our submission in relation to uh, Sports House and the the funding that the council had set aside for that uh, initiative. So I'll take the rest of the information that I've provided within the submission as read, and I'll, if I can hand over to Nolan to. Um, just touch on the sports house budget and then, then we can answer any questions if that's okay. Yeah, thank you. Up to you, Nolan. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I'll just, I'll just take the submission as read as well. Um, and really, it's just uh, keeping you uh, um, updated on where we are with our sports house planning. Uh, we have been working very hard over the last months uh, um, um, uh, with an opportunity. And like I say, we've presented that in our, in our submission. Um, we are keen to, um, while we're working through this COVID-19 period, uh, just to keep that um, rolling along. Um, and so we do uh, submit on that basis um, that we would we would like to keep the uh, allocation in there, which was um, originally uh, in the in the long-term plan, um, while we work through this period as well. Happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll start with Trevor. Um, so Trevor, we've um, we've been written uh, to by um, Sport New Zealand and yep. around their uh, relief fund. And uh, that only came out the other day, but uh, it, there seems to be a reasonable amount there for regional sports organisations and clubs to apply to. Um, uh, that's, um, that's up to 40,000 for um, a... Uh, a, a regional sports organisation, obviously people that have staff, um, and then a thousand dollars per club. Um, that's is that how you see it as well? Yep. So uh, thanks for uh, bringing that up, Mr. Mayor. So basically, the the, the application and the fund process open today. Um, so it was launched last Thursday, open today. So in effect, it is um, a significant amount of money to support our sector in the interim. And a lot of it is largely based on fixed costs. So 40,000 for those regional sports and $1,000 for um, the clubs, as you've said. We've um, processed 12 applications today. The, the whole idea is for us to be able to make a decision within 10 days to be able to get the money out the door and support our sector. 
and I think the money is really, really helpful and it is going to be really beneficial to those organisations. However, my nervousness is around the ongoing support we need around the supporting critical roles in our workforce. Um, I believe the pain is yet to come. I think the wage subsidies, subsidies provided a really good buffer for the majority of our sports, but the pain is going to come sooner um, well, a bit later down the track. So hopefully we're going to see some something in the budget uh, re in relation to the sector around a bit more in that recovery space. But I certainly can tell you from a Sport Mano 2's perspective, you know, our organisation are working really hard with all of our sports to um, to keep them afloat, you know, because we, we, we need to have a sector to rebuild. So... Um, you know, there, there are going to be a number of challenges around what reimagining the future and what, what that looks like uh, for sport and for active rec in the future. And I think if I can just say, and I know there might be other questions, but I, I do say that the relationship with council is fundamental because that's going to open up lots of opportunities around spaces and places and facilities to be able to support our community to um, use those facilities and get out there and be active. Yeah, thanks, Trevor. Um, got a few questions. Um, Councillor Harpenter. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Nolan. I've got a question for both of you. If I do my question first for Trevor. Um, just going forward, Trevor, and looking at what's going to level two is going to look like, what kind of, um, just in your prediction and looking at your um, your your ball um, going forward, what do you think the activity is going to be like um, on our sports fields and our facilities in terms of um, sport going forward? You know, when we when we look at maintenance of our grounds and um, maintenance of our facilities, what do you think the activity is going to be like for sport in Palms North and in Manawatu going forward for, for the next six months? Yeah, I think it's a, a really good question, and again, I, I certainly would it would I'd welcome the opportunity to borrow your crystal ball to see, to see what we can we can see. Um, certainly, we've got a meeting planned on Wednesday with council staff talking to all the sports around, you know, facility usage and what are what are some of those challenges. Every we, probably some of the challenges are going to be around the 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 how sports are applying the the um, measures around alert level two. So we're working with each of them and the national sporting organisations to make sure that we've really got that uh, under control and that they've got that side of things supported. Because as you know, our sector by and large is is largely still built on volunteers. And so there's a lot of work that's required in that space. So the meeting on Wednesday is going to be really helpful. I suppose if I'm really honest, um, Councillor Harper, to what I would be saying and the message we're giving to our sports is um, they're all eager to get going, and we're but we are really trying to be um, considered in our approach so that we don't want them to rush straight out of the gate. We want them to take their time and work with council, work with ourselves to make sure all the planning and preparation uh, has done. It is an unknown around the level of engagement we might get in our community around um, competitive sport. So again, I think there's a lot of unknowns in, in that space um, at, at this point in time. But I, I have to say that our sports have been really, really mature in how they've approached it. You can imagine the first two or three weeks, they were gripped by the crisis they're now sort of moved out of crisis mode and far more into thinking more positively and proactively around how they're working together. But I think that's the key. The key is to, our role is to be able to get them to work together. You would expect in the future shared services and all of those things are going to come back again. And uh, even though it's not a new idea of a new way of working, it's probably going to be something that will be revisited for us to be sustainable. So I don't think I've answered your question no, around no, what it's no. going to so, look so, like. So we so we sort of metrics driven. So if we sort of say we could have been 100% of using our sports fields and facilities, we're not going to be at that. So are we going to be 50%, 60%? That's just sort of the answer that we sort of needed. What What's your yeah. prediction of what kind of usage do you think we're going to have on our facilities for the next six months? Just I, I think it's going to be... 
I think it's going to be closer to 50% around the structured stuff. Uh, I think it'll be a lot more in the unstructured stuff as people start coming out uh, and starting to be more engaged with the active recreation side of things. But I think it's going to be Thanks, some Trevor. time. Yep. Thanks, Trevor. Okay, Thank quick you. question for you, Nolan. Um, it's the million dollar, million point five question. So yes. if you're building a property that's not on council land, yes. how, how do you expect council to contribute to this? In what way? Because it's not on council land. So tell us as councillors how you expect us to contribute to this project when it isn't on council land. Okay, yes, fair enough. Um, so conceptually, Sports House was always uh, uh, going to be a partnership with um, not only the City Council, but all the sports partners that we have reside with us in our in our current sports house facility. Um, our current facility, uh, as you all know, is something which we were looking at as, a, as just a bridging facility to get us into a new sports house. Um, and so the concept is we still want to move from that, which we're going to consider to be purpose purpose built um, and and fit for purpose and we're looking to move to a fit to fit for purpose um, uh, facility so for us conceptually we still believe that there is a strong partnership between ourselves and the city council and all of the sports organizations that we represent okay thank yeah. you uh councillor bowen Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I know we haven't got much time. Uh, Trevor, I just wanted to get a comment from you on age grade sports events coming to the city. What's that looking like going forward for the rest of this year, early next year? Uh, thank you, Councillor Bowen. I think it's a really good question. Um, the, we are still waiting for um, confirmation from secondary school sport around the um, around sports. So. Possibly the decision today might have made that a bit clearer, so there could be some more information coming out. I have been approached by Basketball NZ and Volleyball NZ, which are two of the critical ones that we want to keep in the city. Both of them have come to us indicating, you know, are we still willing to support them if uh, their events uh, are to go ahead? So clearly the answer is, is yes, that we are willing to support them. But again, we, we are working with council around uh, how we might approach that work in that event space. So I, I will be also honest with you that it's going to be a lot more competitive. I think we're going to really have to focus on our competitive advantage. Um, and because I don't think we will win if it's about money. I think it's no. got to be about all those other things that this council has to offer or this city has to offer all those other sports. And certainly a sports house would be great as part of that, but I, I won't delve into that. But I think that's... Um, you know, an ongoing conversation that we're working closely with council on. Okay, thanks. I'll leave that there. I might follow up with you offline, Trevor. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Barrett. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thanks, Trevor and Nolan, for the uh, submission. Trevor, I just wanted to ask what your view is around um, the obvious current surge that we've seen in active transport, walking and cycling, and what Sport Manoa 2 might be doing to mobilise so that in, in the year ahead, we see more support for that sort of activity and encouragement for that sort of activity. Uh, again, Councillor Barrow, I think it's a really good uh, question. We, we've obviously got some resource uh, that we've always funded out of our own budget with uh, Phil Stevens, who does a lot of work in that active transport space. I'm not sure if you're aware that Sport NZ don't consider active transport as part of the remit. Uh, which is um, disappointing, um, but we've we've continued to to fund that area because we do think it's a it's a fundamental part of the 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 play and active rec space. So all, all I can say is you you will expect for us to continue to work in that space and working with our partners in that that opportunity to leverage off um, the the great work. Uh, that people are doing out there with COVID-19 in this time. But also I need to reinforce in our submission the proactive work that council is doing around maintaining those pathways and looking at cycleways. I think that those um, infrastructure build is equally as important as doing the, the programming side of things. So trust us that we're not going to let go of um, doing the um, programming and delivery because we think that's fundamental in the, in the greater scheme of things. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good. Um, that's uh, exhausted the questions, but I'll just ask one more, um, Nolan. Um, without naming names um, around Sports House, um, yes. is the entity that um, you're building you're building with 
Um, are they um, putting 1.5 or, or less or more or anything into the project other than the land? Um, they, we're, we're taking a partnership approach with them. They're not taking, they're not putting a financial stake into it. Okay, cool. All right. Well, look, thank you, gentlemen. Um, thanks for everything you're doing. Um, you're right, Trevor. Sp um, sport and rec and play will come in, um, come into people's lives very much as we, uh, and, and I see uh, Councillor Finlay's told us we're at level two on Thursday. So, I'm picking that um, people will be out and about uh, as much as possible. Um, so thank you for all the work you're doing. Um, keep in touch with us over realignments and uh, where the sector's going. Um, you're so right, it's built on volunteers and uh, uh, a bit of that uh, uh, network is disrupted. Um, so um, yeah, thank you for all the work you're doing. And your submissions, uh, both of them will go towards our May 20th meeting and uh, will be deliberated there. So thank you, gentlemen. Um, Councillors, we will now move to our last submission, which is number 18, which is from uh, the Hoffman Kiln Trust, and ask the Chair, um, Cliff Wilson, to speak to that, please. Are you there, Cliff? Could you unmute, please? If you're there, Cliff, could you unmute your your microphone, please? Mr. Mayor, he's showing as unmuted, but we're not hearing anything. Um, so we might, I might just give him a phone call and see if I can have any success, if you don't mind waiting a few moments. Yeah, we can wait. So councillors, we're at level two. It's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> it's very exciting. It's a relief, quite frankly. Schools are going back. That's what Mate. I was thinking. Mate. But bars are waiting another week. I just see came up on my screen. Mm. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Level two on Thursday for most retail except bars, which will be the 21st. Schools from the 18th. Limit, uh, limit um, of 10, uh, though, on gatherings to be reviewed in, in two weeks. So it, it's a 2.5. But anyway... That's good. I can understand that. So, good, good stuff. So, I wonder if the if the gatherings of ten, the limit on that, because it sounds like it's in the home as well as at restaurants, whether that would also be in the workplace. No, it won't be in the workplace because workplaces have already been able to go back at one yeah. meter distancing. But in terms I of think, like, I think they might be social gatherings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So you'll have to cancel those parties, uh, uh, their councillor. <laughs> so that means we'll be in the chamber next week, does it? Um, I, I'm, so. I'm, I'm, I hope so, and I'm, I've, I've yeah. asked uh, for, in, for some feedback on that, uh, and we will find out, and we'll let you know. I hope for you, hopefully, I can have a, an answer for you tomorrow on that. Um, Great, I, thank I, you. I, I definitely want to be there. Um, yeah. And, I, and I, think the, I think the majority of you do as well. Yeah. We're quite nicely spread out in that big room. Yeah, well, it might be that we need to go to another venue, i.e. the conference centre, because they have better IT set up um, to uh, enable anybody that wants to be isolated still um, to be connected. So, look, it'll, it'll work out either way, and we do have options. So... We will come back to you as soon as possible. Thanks, Grant. Um, Hannah, are we any closer with um, Mr. Wilson? She might still be on the phone. I think so. Mr. Mayor, I've... Um, 
I've got Mr. Wilson on the telephone. I think that's the best we're going to be able to do. Okay. Uh, so I will just adjust my own sound settings so that you can hear him. Okay. Welcome, Cliff. Uh, floor is yours, Cliff. Are you there, Cliff? Look, I, um, I'm i not hearing you, Cliff, at all, no. and I don't think any other councillors are either. No. Um, Hannah, look, I think um, we might take um, the Hoffman Kilns um, submission as being read. Um, if uh, Cliff um, has any extra questions he'd like to, um, uh, uh, or sub, um, extra summary would like to give councillors, um, could I ask that he puts that on an email to to you, and then we um, we we take that out to the rest of uh, council? Certainly, I can do that. Yep, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so um, all right, we'll do that. Thank you. I mean, we understand Hoffman Kiln well, and uh, his 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 request and requirements. So. It's well understood by this council. So, councillors, um, we now we've now gone through all of our uh, submitters. So, thank you um, for your attendance today. We've just got one final vote that we need to do, um, and that is, uh, if I could get that up on screen, please. It's around referring all submissions to the committee of council deliberations meeting um, at the twentieth of May, and that's coming up. So that all material be uh, referred uh, to the Committee of Council meeting on the 20th of May for consideration in the first instance. Um, I'll look to move that. If I could have the Deputy Mayor to second that, please. I will second that. All right. Um, so, councillors, just with um, uh, voice, please. Uh, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Great. You're all in unison. Uh, I'm glad we're not a choir. Thank you. <laughs> All right, um, you are you are done for today. So thank you for your attendance, um, and we'll come back to you um, tomorrow about what what we're doing in terms of the actual uh, venue for deliberations on the twentieth, and we've also got the twenty first scheduled as well. So thank you, everybody, and um, you. have a pleasant evening. And we'll. Do we we'll not have a further right. one at 40, 445, Leslie?